welcome back to Catharsis Inc. This is another episode of Creative Intuition, so it's another craft video. Today we are going to be making homemade gnomes, floral arrangements, hanging branch decor, and mushroom jars. So without further ado, let's get started. So I probably went overboard like I normally do, but here is everything that I acquired for our crafts today. And as you can see, they're all different brands. Most of it did come from the Dollar Tree, and I'll explain that as I get further into the crafting of each item. But yeah, we have several different things to play with here, so let's hop right in. So first I'm going to be starting with the crafts that we have to paint so they'll have time to dry while we work on the other crafts. But the first one here is going to be our mushroom jar. So you're going to be needing a jar and then um, red paint, which I have here. And then I also have a white acrylic marker. And then I'm also going to be embellishing the jar with string and some beads and buttons. These buttons I actually got at Walmart. These I had on hand. It's alphabet beads and then some string. The jar is really cute and I actually found this at the Dollar Tree. And then these paint markers I found on Amazon. And then these acrylic paints I actually found at Michael's. And our next craft is our floral arrangement. So I picked up some Spanish moss from the Dollar Tree. I also found these beautiful floral arrangements from the Dollar Tree. And I was actually looking for three leaf clovers, but I couldn't find any, at least not for an outrageous price. But I found these beautiful yellow and green wildflowers. And then these pretty blue ones so I'll be using those and the Dollar Tree actually has mini crates my Dollar Tree didn't have any but if you buy three of Dollar Tree's mini crates and glue them together it would still be equivalent to this crate that I found at Walmart like I said I just couldn't find any at my Dollar Tree but I did pick up three of the floral foam cubes that I'm going to be using to put in there and then I purchased wood stain in early American color and that was from Walmart and then of course you're going to be needing a sponge brush for the stain and a paint brush for the mushroom jar. And if you notice as I was trying to take the sticker off it left this pesky little residue um, and what I do in order to get that off easier is I use Goo Gone from the Dollar Tree and I just put it on a paper towel and then just rub it and then it's easier to peel that residue off. As you can see I have some stain dots that ended up getting on my lid so I'm just gonna paint over those because I was gonna give my lid a second coat anyways And if we can still see them through the second coat, well, I'll be putting white mushroom dots on the top of the lid anyway. So they'll be our happy little mistakes, as Bob Ross says.
So I'm going to let those dry and I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so now that our lid is dry, I'm going to start putting the white spots on the lid. As you can see, the red is coming through the white, so I'll have to come back and do a second coat after that dries. But in the meantime, I'm going to start decorating the jar with the embellishments. Now you can use these mushroom jars for all kinds of things. You can actually get a smaller jar and use it to hide your keys. You just bury the bottom portion of the jar into the dirt and the only part that shows is going to be the lid and of course it looks like uh, a mushroom or some kind of decor so no one's going to know that your house key is in there or you can use it for herbs or even to keep some craft supplies like buttons and beads or string or anything like that. So for mine I'm going to be embellishing uh, at the bottom of the lid so around here. And I think since the lid is going to be red and white, I'm going to choose green and white for around the rim here. And I'm going to be using the fairy, the mushroom, of course. And then I think I'm going to go with No, maybe just those two. Yeah, we'll use just those two. Then I've also chosen some alphabet letters that spell out the word Earth. Okay, and for these, I think I want them to dangle. So I'm going to tie a looser knot to that. Okay, so that'll dangle like that. Okay, now for the fairy and mushroom, I think I want those to dangle off of each end of one string. So let me see how I can figure that out. Maybe I'll tie this here. So that hang from that end. Okay, so it took me forever to decide what I wanted to do with these buttons, but I finally decided to put the fairy on top with the letters going down and then the mushroom at the end. And I think it turned out really cute. So our lid is ready for the second coat. I might end up having to go in with a brush and some acrylic paint. This marker doesn't want to seem to stick evenly to the lid. It might be too glossy of a base. Yeah, let me just go do that. Okay, so I just got some regular white acrylic paint and I'm just going to go in with that. You could even do these white dots with puffy paint to give them a 3D effect. I think that would look kind of cute as well. And here is my finished product of the jar. I think it turned out really cute and I'll be using mine to hold my dried orange peels for my spell work. But you can use any size jar, you can use as many as you want. You can put them in your garden, you can put them in your craft room for buttons, embellishments and things like that. And of course you can use them to put in, in your garden as a key holder as well. But yeah, I think it turned out really cute. Okay, so while our lid is drying, I'm going to start working on the floral arrangement. 
So first we are going to measure out our foam blocks so they fit nicely within this. And the third one, as you see, doesn't fit. So we'll have to cut that. And it looks like right here. So we'll cut that down to size. Okay. Actually, I'll put it in this way. There we go. So this is what it looks like. And then we can take our flowers and you can choose whatever flowers you want. So if you want inks or purples or yellows or anything like that, you can choose whichever ones that you want. So I am going to cut each individual flower stem at this point so it's smaller to work with and it'll look like this. Now, before I start placing my flowers, I want to put some Spanish moss down and this will cover up any of the green foam so you can't see it through the flowers. And you can hot glue this if you want, just so it stays better. I'm just gonna lay it in there. Okay, so I got that all covered up. And the green and the yellow flowers are gonna be my base flowers. So I'm gonna put those in first. And then the blue flowers are gonna be my accent flowers. So I'll put them in last. And if you're curious, I did get three bushels of the yellow and green and only got two bushels of the blue and that'll be plenty to fill this little crate I might actually end up with more than I need which is good we'd rather have more than than less now that the yellow and green are looking pretty good I'm going to start putting in some of the blues and I'm going to do the same thing by cutting it off lower got all my blue flowers in and actually I think I am going to add the third yellow and green flowers in there as well just to fluff it out a little more and there you have it your own floral display that you made yourself with a wooden crate and flowers from the Dollar Tree it's I think it turned out really beautiful and you can also accent the box with ribbon if you want actually I might go do that so I'll be right back. So I found this really pretty crocheted lace and really pretty green that I'll be using. So I'm going to measure out how much I'll need. And there we go. You have your perfect little floral display for your dining room table or your window box or even outside on your front porch. So for my next craft, I will be making a hanging stick decor. And I actually got this big stick. Uh, it fell off one of my trees during one of our last winter storms. So that was very convenient. Um, but these other things like these pearl beads I got at the Dollar Tree. I have some gold wire here. Some embellishments I got from Walmart some stretchy white string i found this beautiful crystal from joann's and i believe it was only two dollars and something so that's a great price and then i also found these beads from joann's and it comes in four strands 
And then I found these really pretty embellishments at Joann's as well. And then I found these buttons at Walmart. And then I have some twine that I'm going to use to hang the stick. And that I just had in my stock. And then I found these clear quartz crystals at Michael's. And it comes in this set. And I think it might have been $16.99 for all these. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang strands of different things from the stick and then hang it in my living room as a display piece. And I'll be hanging it with the twine. So let's go ahead and get started. Since these beads are already in strands, I think I'm going to work with those first. So to make a sturdier base for my bead strands to hold on to, I'm going to be using some of this beading wire to wrap around the stick and then I will attach the beads to the wire. So since these are already on a clear string, I'm just going to leave them that way and I'm going to attach them to the hoop that I made with the wire. And then I'm just going to do the same thing with the other things. Now for the crystal, I'm going to attach that using just wire and I'm going to wrap the wire around the crystal. So I'll take my wire and I'll just wrap it around like this. Now this one I want to be a little shorter than the beads I just did. So I'm going to cut it a little shorter and then wrap it around. Okay, now I think I'm going to add some embellishments. Okay, so I got a pretty little gold embellishment on there. All right, so now I'm going to be using some of my stretchy string to put on some of these beads. And then I've chosen this embellishment for the end of it. So I changed my mind. I actually put this on the beaded one. Or the, the white pearl and, and clear bead one. And then I just did a strand of these beads. So unfortunately my camera died yesterday in the middle of crafting. Luckily I didn't lose that much footage. But off camera I redid the wiring for my crystal. And this seems to hold better than what I had done before. I just twisted it a little bit. I had actually watched a video on YouTube to see how to do it to be more secure and that seems to be working and then also i had originally used this white stretchy wire for my beads here and i didn't like how it looked so i went to walmart last night and i actually got some of this clear bead and stretch and I like it a lot better and I did a gold wire hoop up above and then I just attached the clear wire to that and then strung the beads so I like that a lot better so let's finish this thing up I also discovered yesterday that the pearls that I bought at the Dollar Tree don't have holes in them to use as beads so while I was at Walmart last night, I picked up some pearl beads. And while I was there, I also found these really pretty gold and silver feathers. So I'll be using the gold feathers for my decor. And this is how the hanging branch decor turned out. I think it turned out really pretty. So I have gold feathers with a gold moon on either side. And then I have pearl beads with little gold accents. So a moon, little floral, a star. And then I have a little cherub. Then I have my rose colored beads. And then the middle one is the pearls with the clear beads and then at the bottom of that I have this little 
embellishment with the birds. And then I have my clear quartz with a star. And then another pearl strand with the gold embellishments. And then at the bottom of that, I have a teapot. And then I finish it off with another feather and moon embellishment. So now I'm going to be making the gnome. And I got this scarf at the Dollar Tree, which I'll be using for the hat and the body. I got this faux fur material from Joann's. And I got the cone from Walmart. I got these little black pom-poms, which I'm going to be using for the nose um, at Walmart. And then I had some things in my stash, like this ribbon and then some um, foam decor that I got from the Dollar Tree a while back and these little ornamental things. I believe I got these from Walmart a couple years ago, but it's a leprechaun, a rainbow, shamrock, a coin, a pot of gold, and it just says Irish. So I don't know if I'm gonna be using them or not, but we'll see how how it all pans out here. But first I'm gonna be making the body and I just wanna make sure I'm gonna have enough for the cone as well. So I might wrap the cone first so we can see what we're working with here. Okay, so let me cut this. So we know we'll have enough for the hat and then we can just work on the body. My scissors don't cut very good. I don't have fabric scissors, so I'm using what I got. Okay, there we go. So I'll sit this over to the side. Now for our body, you'll want something heavy for the base so it stands up. So I think I'm gonna be using some rice and then I'll fill the rest of the body up with some fluff. Okay, so I got my rice and I got my pillow fluff. So I wanna make sure that my body is gonna be big enough to hold my hat. Okay, so I think this is, this here, if I cut this in half, that should be big enough to hold my body or hold my hat, I mean. So I'm gonna cut that there. And you can make this gnome by sewing or you can use hot glue. So if you're not a very good sewer, then hot glue is also an option. So what I'm gonna do is just glue my sides together. So this side and this side, and we're gonna leave the top open so we can put the rice and the fluff in there. Now we're gonna turn it inside out like so, okay? And then at the bottom of your body, you're gonna wanna put some type of weight. So whether it be rice, beans, you can even put stones if you want. I know some people have even used cat litter. And this way the gnome won't fall over. Okay, so then I'm gonna fill the rest of it up with this pillow fluff. So then I'm gonna take some string and I'm going to tie off the top. So just bunch it all together. And some people even use rubber bands. So then we wanna take our faux fur and just cut out a beard shape. And you can use a template if you want to do that, but I think I'm just going to wing it. And we'll see how it turns out here. Okay. Then we're gonna start by gluing down the top. Then we're going to glue our nose down. All right, so I'm gonna set that aside. So then we can start working on our hat. And I'm gonna try to save these tassels so we can end up, okay. So let me go ahead and cut the tassels off. All right, so as you see, it doesn't cover there, but we're gonna do a little hack. 
and cut a corner of this off and just glue it on there because we're going to flip it over anyway so you're not going to be able to tell and you can put that part of the gnome's hat to the back so we'll just glue it on like this so let's let's glue this on first okay and then we can take our little piece and make sure you don't glue the styrofoam because we're going to take this off to flip it okay so it looks like a mess right now but we're going to flip it and make sure that you don't glue the top because that's where we're going to put our little uh, stringies and then we're going to even out the bottom of this at the end but in the meantime we are going to glue our tassels to the inside of the hat so i'm just going to fold them up like this and we're just going to glue them to the inside so just take your glue and run it around the inside of the hat and then squeeze it together okay then we're going to put it back on our cone make sure the seam is in the back wherever you want the back to be okay and then you can trim the excess actually i might just fold it down since my scissors aren't very good and you can glue this if you want but either way we're going to glue it onto our body and we can cut off these strings so we don't see those and they won't be an issue okay and then if you want to scoop out some of this in order for that to fit you can do that as well okay so i scooped out a little bit of it so that'll fit nicely right up in there oh that's the back okay right up in there for when we go to attach it okay let me go ahead and glue this front portion down so it doesn't move and show the styrofoam so i'm going to add some glue into the indentation here and also to the bottom of the cone and make sure the back is in the back and then you can just shove that up in there okay and we're just going to push that down all right now as you can see my nose kind of disappeared so i should have probably done that last so just to accentuate it more i am just going to add another pom-pom to that there we go all right so now that our hat is on we can go ahead and glue the rest of the beard down if you want okay now i'm going to add this shamrock to the hat so i'm going to hot glue that make sure you get the edges really good so it sticks down it doesn't peel off okay put it off to the side here okay and then i think i'm going to add this little shamrock charm to the top of the tassel so i'm just going to put a little bit of hot glue on the top of this and push it down in the center and then to cover up my my seam here i am going to hot glue some of this ribbon around there so we'll start off a little at a time and i just want it to say happy saint patrick's day here at the front there we go and then you just go all the way around here and i'm making sure that 
The seam is going to be at the back. And here is the finished product of the St. Patrick's Day gnome. I think it turned out so cute, guys. And it's going to be perfect added to my other St. Patrick's Day decor. I hope you enjoyed this video and maybe got some ideas for some spring crafting. Now to give you even more inspiration, I'll be doing a giveaway this time. And I'll be giving away these bits and bobs of scrapbook embellishments and scrapbook paper and some little things down here. So if you'd like to be entered in that, be sure to like this video, subscribe to my channel, and then down in the comments, just leave me a little note saying what type of craft you'll be doing this spring as well. But thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye.